just got killed is here, hooray! Hey everybody, it's a really exciting day here in the studio. I have a brand new Scut Kiln. This is a Firebox 14. I'm really excited about opening it up and firing this baby up. So let's get started. Let's open these crates. Come on. Here it is, the unveiling. I know you want to jump right in and get started firing glass, but there are a few preliminary things you want to do before using your kiln like vacuum the interior and kiln wash the bottom to prevent any glass from sticking should it fall off your shelf. Then plug your kiln in and let the firing begin. All kilns fire differently, so we want to make a small simple test project to see how this kiln fires. Here I have a 6 inch by 6 inch piece of white glass and a 6 inch by 6 inch piece of color. I'm using powdered frit and a stencil to create a design on each of the two layers. This is a fast and easy way to have artistic fun while you're making a test piece. I'm going to use the white piece as the base layer and then these color pieces as the top layer. This simple type of assembly gives me a really nice design effect. Now we're going to place the assembled glass on a primed kiln shelf and start the kiln. For our first firing, we're going to use auto mode. The first thing we select is our firing speed. Then we pick our firing process, which is going to be full. Then the kiln asks if we're ready, and we turn it on and we are firing. Look at our beautiful results. Now let's test the slumping program. We're going to introduce a mold, place our glass on the mold, close that kiln up, and then we're going to select the slumping program. We're going to use the auto mode again, so we'll cycle through till we find that. Then we're going to select our firing speed, and then we're going to select our firing process. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and start the kiln. And look how beautifully this slumped. It conformed to the mold beautifully. I like making this project so much that I made it in three different color schemes. For this next project, we're going to test the tack fusing program. But first we have to fuse some nuggets or little pieces together to create this interesting bowl. I've layered clear glass on top of a tan glass and I'm going to fire this to a full fuse temperature. Look how beautiful these little stones are. This is a terrific firing. Now I'm going to lay out the bowl by tracing a circle on a round kiln shelf with a pencil. Then I'll arrange those glass nuggets inside this pencil line to ensure that the finished piece will fit in my mold. And look how fun this is. I'm working with larger nuggets on the inside, working out to medium and then small nuggets around the perimeter. Again, we're going to use the auto mode to do a tack fuse. The first thing we select is our firing speed, then we select our firing process, and then we start the kiln. These preset programs make getting started super fast and easy. And once again, look, we have beautiful results. Look how lovely this piece is with the nice large elements in the middle, the medium on the outside, and those tiny little details on the inside. But uh-oh, maybe, Whoa! Didn't see that coming. That's not supposed to happen. Let's check it out again in slow motion. Wow. That's disappointing. Okay, so what do we do? How do we solve this problem? What went wrong? The glass was not heated enough to stick together, so this would be a great time to read the operating manual. And here's the problem. The tack fuse temperature in the auto mode is lower than the temperature that I normally use. I usually use 1365. The solution is to add my own program that fires hotter up to 1365. I found detailed directions on how to enter this program in the operating manual. In the pro mode, I enter the program, then I enter the number of segments that I want to use. Then I enter three bits of information. The rate at which I want to fire the glass, the temperature that I want to take it to, and how long I want it to hold there. So here I'm programming in that I want to go to 1,365 degrees and then I want to hold here for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to enter information for the second segment and in this segment I want to go down to 960 degrees and I want to hold there for 40 minutes. It takes a few minutes to enter my own programs, but the great thing is once they're entered I can access them anytime I want over and over. It may look like I'm doing this super fast, but I sped this part of the video up a little bit for time's sake. 
When we actually enter these different pieces of information into the controller, you have plenty of time to make sure that all the information is accurate. Now I'm going to review the program to make sure all the information is correct. After reviewing the program, if I've entered something incorrectly, I have the option to go back in and change it. But this program looks like it's all set. We're ready and good to go. Now let's enter this project again and let's tack fuse it together a second time and this time at a higher, hotter temperature. Let's open the kiln and see our results. Looks terrific. Let's pick it up and see what happens. All right, we have success. The piece is intact and sturdy enough to use. Now let's give it a beautiful shape and contour by slumping it. And look how beautiful this is as a really nice, beautiful, shallow profile. And here, of course, is the beauty shot. It takes a little while to get to know your particular kiln. I recommend taking notes so you can repeat your successes and avoid those things that didn't come out quite the way you planned. Then you have exciting creating and fusing to look forward to. Happy fusing!